up the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 11 of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian WWE podcast that discusses and reacts to Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. We're on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, this podcast this podcast will be posted in full on Spreaker itself, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR, or on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. So go check us out wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen, listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, at NoHoldsBarWP, and join in on the conversation by having your questions read right here on the show. We are also available to follow on Facebook and Instagram by searching up no Holds Bar WP. All links will be in the video podcast version of this episode on YouTube in the description below. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and I am not joined by Corporate Cappy in the studio today. No, I am not. Um... Schedule's conflicted, and this week is a especially a busy, busy week for us this week, especially me today. I did so much work today, and I'm I'm going to be botching probably a lot in this show, especially because it's live. and just I'm exhausted from the amount of work I had to do today. But uh, Corporate Cappy with his new job and our conflicting schedules, we couldn't get uh, any other day with us together at the same time to get the Lowdown show out, so we both agreed for me to do it solo to, uh, for today. And... Yeah, that's what's going to happen. And uh, the next week's uh, podcast is actually in jeopardy of not even happening at all, actually. And uh, it's really quite shocking. We haven't missed, we haven't missed the lowdown show in quite some time. But uh, next week is especially busy for us. Uh, Cobra Cappy getting ready to go on his uh, trip to Michigan. Uh, I got a lot of work dates coming up. And uh, I'm uh, after my uh, long uh, eight-day straight work week, I'll be going on vacation myself. So, uh, But... If there's no lowdown show, you guys are still going to get content. Uh, I'm going to be uploading a lot of content um, through YouTube, so take a look out for that. And I'm going to be posting some episodes for the Sunday Night Heat and the uh, new series that's going to be starting, uh, Blast from the Past. I'm hoping to get episode one out to you guys soon, so stay tuned for that. So if there's no lowdown show, you still guys are going to get some content, which will be uploaded throughout the week or the next two weeks, I guess. So stay tuned for that. But again, no corporate cafe today. It's just me doing solo. And uh, next week is most likely not going to happen either. But there will be content for you guys to uh, listen to and watch uh, specifically on YouTube starting next week. Um, and looking at the chat here. Greg's in here. How's it going, Greg? And Mason. What's going on, Mason? I'm doing all right. I'm tired. Mason freaking exhausted. Uh, so, But I'm still going to do a lowdown show for you guys. Uh just get the plugs out of the way. Go find me in Patreon. Go find me gears towards us getting to WrestleMania. So go check that out. All the, the whole stories on there. Patreon, a little as a dollar a month supports the podcast. Go check it out there. A lot of great prizes for each donor's uh, donation for each month on the Patreon page. Go check that out. Um, I also want to get into uh, this Sunday for Money in the Bank. I'm trying extremely hard to get it off work. Um, unfortunately, I got scheduled the unfortunate night shift. Um my work's been crazy, man, especially this week. Uh, a lot of people going on vacation, and I don't know how our managers are approving everyone going at the same, f- <laughs> same fucking time because then it just makes me taking over, and I'm a supervisor, so I got to freaking fill in for everybody. So it's tough. So I'm literally going to try my best to get the night shift. If not, I'm going to be missing Money in the Bank. I'm going to have to watch it when I get home at midnight, and then uh, I don't think I'll, there will be no pay-per-view review or no live show review. Uh, if uh, I'm going to be able to miss money in the bank. So uh, other than that, I'm starting up a 2K17 series idea. I got uh, an idea for you guys and basically what I'm going to do. It's just it's not going to be universe mode. It's not going to be my career mode. It's all done on YouTube. I see everyone doing that. Um, I kind of want to do something different. Uh, basically, my 2K17 idea is going to be basically geared towards you fans out there. And I'm going to be doing it on my uh, real Kyle Master Twitter account. So go follow that if you are a new listener and stay tuned for that. Um, basically the idea is, uh, it's going to be a fantasy matchup. So any matchup you want to see out there, 
whether it be like CM Punk versus Ricochet or, you know, Baron Corbin versus The Undertaker, something, whatever you want to see, I'm going to make that happen in 2K17 and I will commentate the match. I will not control anybody. So there will be no biasism or no favoritism towards anybody. I'm just going to commentate the CPUs going at it on full difficulty and maybe it'll be a good match. We'll see. Um, but that's my 2K17 idea. It's still in the works. But once that comes uh, comes out, I'll let you guys know on the uh, Real Kyle Masters account. Um, all right, so that's all out of the way. I'm pretty sure that's all I had to talk about. Uh, yep, okay. One thing I want to rant about this week, and I don't know if you guys seen it, the, the recent episode of Bring It to the Table. I think it was after Raw this week or beforehand. Um this show is getting, like, half WWE PGIs, man. Like, especially Rosenberg. Rosenberg started out, okay, now he's just... He's always becoming, like, Sam Roberts, man. You can tell when someone's getting, you know, I guess, uh, sucking the corporate dick, if I could put it in a way. Uh, and Rosenberg is, is becoming, like, Sam Roberts, basically. It, it, it's, it, it's terrible. It's ruining the show. The one part of the show that made me cringe was when Rosenberg and JBL both agreed that Strowman versus Reigns at Payback was a match of the year candidate. Are you fucking kidding me? That was a match of the year candidate. Seriously. Out of everything that's happened so far, even in the just WWE, that is the match candidate. Seriously, match of the year. That's one of them. You guys are both huffing paint. I loved Corey Graves' uh, his pick. He's actually a smart guy. He picked Dun uh, Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate. And actually take over Chicago. That's match of the year so far for me. Number one. Out of anything that's happened. Oh, Omega and Okada. I actually enjoyed this one way better. I think Dunn and Bate lead the, the, the way for match of the year so far. But as for Rosenberg and JBL to both agree with Strowman versus Reigns at Payback. Are you kidding? That's match of the year in your mind? If that what makes it a match of the year, then I don't know what the hell professional. Then they don't know what the hell professional wrestling is. Basically is what I'm trying to say. Oh, man, I, I I couldn't believe it. I listened to it today, and I'm like, really? Did I actually just hear that properly? Reigns versus Strowman for match of the year. Unbelievable, man. That's nuts. That's nuts. Uh, anyways, uh, yep. So if you guys are new, we kind of uh, revamped the Lowdown Show. We used to do just Raw and Smack the Review. Kind of like we would literally just start, basically repeat what happened from the show start to finish. We're not doing that anymore. Basically, what we're doing... Raw and SmackDown, we're going to give our reaction discussions about me just alone today uh, to the shows. And then we would uh, talk about when necessary, how we would have rebooked certain matches and how we would have rebooked the show. So that's how we're going to do it. A lot of people on YouTube and podcasts like to review the show. We want to be a little bit different. We have a segment called the List of Ten. Basically, we have a ten, perfect ten superstar of the week and a superstar that makes the list. So stay tuned for that. We also have your tweets out there. will be read after the Raw and SmackDown reaction. So stay tuned for that. I asked you guys to list me some questions, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And I'll answer everybody. No one will be, uh, no one will be left out. So... Let's uh, get into it, guys, and start off with uh, Monday Night Raw this week from the Cajun Dome in Lafayette, Louisiana. Oh, boy. More like Cricketsville. Yes, the crickets were out in Lafayette, Louisiana. My God, was it bad. Like, get yourself pumped for a wrestling event. I don't understand how you can go to a wrestling event and sit there and be quiet. You pay good money. To go watch these guys perform in the ring for you and you sit there and just, you're quiet about everything. It was terrible. And they reacted to the worst things. I, I love when they reacted to the whole bear situation. That was awesome. No one no one gave a fuck. That's, where they, that's how they should have reacted. But that's how I reacted to the, the rest of the show when there was actually some good parts to Raw. But you know what? This week, Monday Night Raw, garbage. Absolutely garbage. God, man, I, I don't know, man, this is, this is ridiculous, Raw, there's, there's no excuse for the product they're showing the last two weeks, they're literally, the roster that they got, they have no excuse to give us shitty product every week, especially this week, this week was the worst, it started out good, beginning of the show is probably the best part and only good part of all of Monday Night Raw, just like out of everything we've seen on Monday Night Raw, the opening of Raw was the only good thing, if you're gonna sit there and tell me that Raw was okay, or meh, or there was more than just the opening as a good part, you're huffing paint. There was nothing else wrong or right with Monday Night Raw but the opening segment. 
That was it. Ross sucked. It was a complete dumpster fire, just like the hashtag for the show. It sucked this week. No excuse. And our buddy JD uh, pointed out, he actually believes that, he has a he has an interesting theory that Kevin Dunn, Bugs Bunny back there, and, and Vince McMahon actually hate professional wrestling. And I agree with him. This is bad. Like, what the hell did we get this week? We got a, a guy and a fucking bear mascot wrestle a match. Are you kidding? How does that constitute as professional wrestling? I want to know. I know we're in the sports entertainment business, but come on. This is getting pathetic. Honestly, pathetic. Oh, man. It's just that the opening was the best part. And I love the opening. Okay? We had the, the Universal Champion Brock Lesnar making his appearance for the first time since Mania. Thank God. We had no idea what the hell was going on with this guy. Um, he finally shows up. He gets a good reaction, like he probably should. But to me, if I was there, I wouldn't give a shit. I don't give a shit if a champion shows up missing after three months. That's it's, it's, it's ridiculous. We all know what our opinions are on that. They had he had a pretty good brawl with Samoa Joe, though. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, it kind of was redone, though. It was kind of rinse and repeat thing. We've all seen this type of brawl before where the locker room just gets sent out and the, and the whole locker room's like splitting everyone or both the guys up and they're eventually breaking free and attacking each other. We've seen this before, man. We've seen this a hundred times with Brock Lesnar. Yeah, it was cool, but I've seen it before. We're something new. Why do we got to resort to the same crap every goddamn time Brock Lesnar has to have a brawl with someone more in- or just as intense as he is? Why do we have to get the same crap? I Honestly, I don't understand. But anyways, it was good. That was the only good part of Raw. We even had, if anyone noticed, the revival were in there. I thought they were supposed to be off TV. Why weren't they being kept off TV? I thought they were supposed to be kept off TV if it had something to do with this Enzo and casting, which we'll get into later, or until their injuries were, were better. I don't know why they're appearing on TV as a injured tag team. And, like, both guys were out there, but whatever. I, I, I spotted them. For some reason, why they sent the revival out there, I don't know. You probably had more people sitting by catering, not doing fuck all. They, they could have sent out there, but, you know, the revival, I, see, I guess, was a good idea. Whatever. Um... Elias Samson uh, faced off against Dean Ambrose in a decent... I, I like Elias Samson. And he, this guy's got gen, a genuine uh, gimmick. Uh, he draws so much heat. Uh, he's got, I love the whole guitar thing where he sings about the city he's in and just generates heat from that. He's got a good look. He's got a sick finisher. The guy's almost a complete package, man. Elias Samson, um, I've said it before on the show, he, he's He's awesome. It's just this match was all right, man. It was typical. I knew Miz was going to interfere. Miz interfered in the same typical way, and it cost Dean Ambrose the match, and Elias Samson picked up the victory on Ambrose. So it still looks like they're doing the Ambrose and Miz feud, which I don't know why. We've seen this feud a million times. We've already seen it on SmackDown. Again, like me and Corporate Cappy would say, why do we have to get the same goddamn feuds every goddamn week and every goddamn time a pay-per-view is done? I don't understand. Um, uh, the Cruiserweights this week, oh, man. I feel bad for them, man. I honestly feel bad. They need to just get... I honestly wish the Dirty B would just listen to the people out there and put these guys in their own show on Wednesday night in full sale because the crowd doesn't give a shit, man. crowd gives no shits about 205 Live, especially when you go to cities like Lafayette. They don't give a crap. They don't care. They care for people like Roman Reigns to show up and make them wet their pants, and then that's it. Um... The cringiest thing I ever seen was <laughs> happen this week when Noam Dar is making his entrance against Cedric Alexander. <laughs> I've seen Twitter go nuts over this. Um, he's making his entrance and he's on FaceTime with Alicia Fox, who is probably doing the most cringiest scream of all time the entire entrance way. And then he like puts his phone down and then he turns around and the match lasts like four seconds. The match was shorter than Lesnar and Goldberg or or Goldberg and Owens. It was seriously short. I don't. Why did we need this? Why did we actually need this this week? This just. Oh my God! No wonder Triple H is pissed off at Vince McMahon for the the, the use of the cruiserweights and the NXT talent to get called up because of this bullshit right here. No Amdar wouldn't be doing that in the Cruiserweight Classic or on his own show on 205 Live from Full Sail if it was run by Triple H. He wouldn't be doing this goddamn garbage. Cedric Alexander would be getting into a better feud and having to kick No Amdar's ass in two seconds because he wasn't paying attention. What the fuck is this? What is this? Why do I have to see this? Why do I have to see the Cruiserweights get dumbed down when they hyped it for so many weeks? I don't understand this. 
Anyways, uh, Seth Rollins confronted Bray Wyatt. I don't care about that feud, man. I, I honestly can't care about Bray Wyatt. We had the whole news thing, and the <laughs> it was funny with the whole JoJo situation. That's hilarious, though. Good for Bray Wyatt. I know there's you know the bad stuff with him cheating on his wife, and that's ethically wrong. But <laughs> with JoJo, holy moly, man, Bray, man, I give Bray props. I didn't. It's just it's an odd pairing. It was odder than we found out Del Rio and Paige were together. I I had more of a really kind of reaction to. Bray Wyatt and JoJo than Del Rio and Paige. I just unbelievable, man. I good. I guess I can say good for Bray Wyatt. I'm not all for the whole cheating thing. Actually, I'm not at all all for the cheating thing. I just that's that's incredible, man. Um, but whatever. That's that's Bray Wyatt's personal life. Uh, but as for wrestling, I can't get behind him. The guy loses every time he has a match. He's trying to start a feud with Seth Rollins, which I don't give a shit about. I honestly thought it was going to be Finn Balor. We didn't even get fucking Finn Balor on the show this week. He's off in Singapore for some reason or wherever the hell he was. Uh, I don't know if it's promoting the company or what. I don't know why you just wouldn't have him on the show. And then when they actually go over there for live events, then you have him promote the company. Not during when Raw is in the back in the United States. That's what I don't get. But anyways, um, it is what it is. I guess we're getting Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins. Um, as for the, this whole Titus brand thing, it looks like they're trying to recruit Tazawa. Sure. I guess they're trying to – basically, it goes to what I, the one news article I said on the, the Lowdown show the other week. Uh, they're trying to expand the Titus brand into 205 Live, and they want uh, 205 Live to mean more. So they're kind of expanding the Titus brand into it, I guess, to sh- ma- show main roster superstars on 205 Live, like we saw this week with Titus O'Neil. Um, Apollo Crews defeated Kalisto this week, and basically Tazawa's at ringside in his suit. And I guess just kind of promoting the Titus brand. <laughs> the guy did like a th- awkward, like, threesome uh, uh, selfie in the ring, whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. It's, I know they're trying hard with the Titus brand, but it was it's garbage. It, it didn't. It's garbage. It's, until they do something good with it, I don't care, man. You're going to try and include Tazawa? It really? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know how to feel about it. Um,. As for uh, more of the cruiserweights, Neville didn't even have a match with Rishwan. He kind of just brutally attacked uh, Rishwan uh, and cuts a promo on Tazawa. So it looks like they're going to Neville. I don't even know what the, the direction is with the cruiserweight title. Oh, we know, is it Tazawa next in line? Is it still TJP? Because he's still in it. I don't know what's going on. I honestly don't know what's happening. We don't even know what's happening with uh, Austin Aries. He made an announcement this week on 205 Live. I don't know what's going on. The Cruiserweight division is in a clusterfuck right now. So we'll just have to see what happens. I Honestly, just after seeing it this week, I'm scratching my head to the point going, oh my gosh, should I even, keep, should I even watch 205 Live anymore? I, I don't know. Oh, man. Uh... What else happened on Raw this week? Oh, I, it's not, speaking of lack of direction, the, the women's division. Who cares about the women's division? What do we get this week? A cringe triple, or a cringe six man or six woman tag match that we honestly don't care about. I honestly think they're just trying to copy SmackDown and try to include as much women in at the same time as them. Even though SmackDown makes sense because they're building towards a Money in the Bank match. Raw is not. There's going to be no Money in the Bank women's match at Great Balls of Fire. It's probably going to be one-on-one. But with who? They keep teasing Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss. When they keep including Nia Jax. And they're including Mickie James and Dana Brooke. And now they brought back Emma. What the fuck is happening with this division, man? Who is number one contender? We got three weeks to Great Balls of Fire. We have no clear number one contender and no start of a feud to get billed towards. It's garbage. I hate Raw's, Raw Women's Division. They have good talent. I just hate the division. It's terrible. I Honestly, I, I'd love to see Alexa Bliss face Sasha Banks one-on-one, but it doesn't look like we're going to get that. I honestly wouldn't doubt if we get a tag team match at Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> I, I honestly think we're gonna get, we're not even gonna get the women's title defended at Great Balls of Fire. I'm calling it right now. It's gonna be a tag team match. You watch. It'll be a tag team match. All right. Let's talk. Let's get all the way. The fucking bear situation. Oh my god. So do I even need to really talk about this? The Miz needed a partner to face Heath Slater and Rhino. Big test here. You, know, you couldn't find a partner that would gladly face these two, really. And instead, we got the bear. Some rando dressed up in a bear costume. Oh my god, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah, okay, it was funny at first, but it was just terrible. Why do I need to see this? What what part of this whole thing makes Raw good? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I don't need to talk about this anymore. I don't need to talk about the goddamn bear. The bear can go be the bear and he can fuck off. That's it. 
All right, we're going to move on. Um, Club 8, oh, we got, okay, we got a more update on this Enzo and Cash thing. And I told you guys it was a freaking revival. I know it's a revival. I'm sticking with them. Cash Show is getting attacked again. And the revival walk by in the background. Once again, I guarantee you guys it's him. Stop coming out and saying it's Big Cast or I hope it's Big Cast or maybe it's the Big Show. It's neither, okay? It's just Big Cast getting jealous at Big Show and Big Cast thinking it's the Big Show. And then eventually the revival are going to show themselves and it's going to be a Enzo and Cast and revival feud. I guarantee it, guys. Don't look too hard into it. We've seen what Dirty has done with the booking lately. Do you honestly think they would do something, a great booking style like Big Cass turning on Enzo? No. It's not going to fucking happen. It's not going to happen whatsoever. We got the cringiest thing in the world two weeks in a row with the big show coming out and helping out Enzo while he gets brutally attacked by the club after the club beating them. So we actually had the club winning for once. Thank Christ. Um... But they don't. They still do nothing for me. They need to reform a bigger club with Finn Balor and AJ Styles. As for now, they just do nothing for me. They're not even competing for the tag belt. So why the hell should I even care about the club? I do care about the Enzo and Cash situation because I love the revival. I hope it's them, and I hope when they come back and prove to everybody that it's the revival, it, it, it's going to be awesome. I'd love to see a revival for you, Enzo and Cass. I think they could re uh, have a really good feud, but... Again, it goes all the way back. I can even keep saying it's going to be a good feud. But it goes all the way back to what Triple H has been saying this week and being pissed off at Vince McMahon for the way he's using the NXT call-ups. It's probably not going to be a good feud. I'd want it to be a good feud, but it probably won't. It's sad that I, 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 I'm I hating Derby more and more as the weeks go by, man. It's it's really tough to follow Raw right now. I might boycott Raw for a while if, it's, if this continues. Um, and I really don't because I like a lot of people on Raw. So the main event threw me off guard. Uh, we had Sheamus and Cesaro against the Hardys. I honestly thought that was going to be early in the show. I honestly don't know why they uh, didn't just put Lesnar and Joe at the end of the show and had their brawl to end the show. I think that would have kept people in the arena at least because you started off with that and then you just bored the shit out of everyone in the arena and on TV and watching at home. But you end with this. This, this, this potentially good title match that ends in a double countout. Unfucking believable. Unbelievable. I can't believe they ended with a two out of three falls tag team title match that ended in a double count out. Why didn't they just have Cesaro and Sheamus win dirty? Why did it have to be by double count out? I thought that was a horrible idea, in my opinion. And honestly, thought this probably shouldn't have been the main event as much as these guys deserve to be in the main event. I don't think this should have been the main event of Raw, especially what happened in the beginning of the show. That should have ended Raw. But what a way to end the show, man. That really threw me off guard. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly think we're going to get the Hardys the ones that are going to be the ones to split up. Out of all the tag teams on Raw, the Hardys will split up. Uh, I think it's eventually going to come to fruition. Uh, the whole broken thing is still up in the air. We haven't heard a lot lately about it. It's been really kept quiet. I don't know if they finally settled or something, but... Honestly, one day we're going to see Broken Hardy in the WWE. I just, it's just a matter of when. And I think that is going to be the time when they split the team up. Maybe they split the team up by the next draft if they end up having one. And Jeff Hardy goes over to SmackDown. I kind of see Jeff making the jump over to SmackDown. Matt staying on Raw with the whole Broken thing. I think they may be leaning towards a Broken Matt versus Bray Wyatt WrestleMania match. That would be a really sick WrestleMania match. Hopefully they don't do anything CGI cringe like they did at WrestleMania 33 with Orton. That would be a horrible idea. Um, anyways, uh, some other good parts to Raw, or the other good part to Raw, there's only like two in my opinion, was the Gold Lesson Our Truth promos. I'm actually excited for this feud. They are putting on some sick promos. Now, I do think they should stop doing it after this week. They've done it for, what, three weeks straight now? And Goldust and R-Truth, I think, are going to have their uh, epic uh, match at Great Balls of Fire. And I actually hope they don't put it in the pre-show like I, I read. That's the, the rumored pre-show match. I honestly hope that they move these guys up on the main card because I think a lot of people are excited for this uh, this feud. And I, and I see a lot of people on Twitter talking about it. They can't wait for this match. R-Truth looks more serious than he's ever been. Uh, back to war like, hey, hey, you know, you're going to get gock days. And then Goldust back to the heel Goldust, which everyone loves. I think these guys are going to put on a really good feud and a really good match. So we're so far, we're off to a good start. So I cannot wait for their match. I just hope it's not in the kickoff like the rumored kickoff shows for that show is supposed to be. So I cannot wait for their match together. Um, 
I don't want to talk about the cringe backstage interview with Bailey. I mean, I, they've ruined Bailey, in my opinion. It sucks because she's my girl. And they've, they've killed her character. And, and the interview did nothing for me either. It was probably the worst interview I've ever seen. But that's as much as I'm going to talk about it. And that's why I'm as, <laughs> as much as I'm going to hate it. Um, I, I read today. I don't know if a lot of you guys read today. Uh, Paige is due to be coming back soon. And apparently she's coming back to Monday Night Raw. So that's going to be interesting. Um, I'm predicting her to come back maybe after Great Balls of Fire. Or maybe by SummerSlam to start a feud. I think that the, she is going to be put in a feud. As much as we read that WWE has no plans for her. There's always going to be plans for people. Uh, but good for Paige for getting back in the gym right now. And getting back into it. And hopefully returning to WWE soon, man. She was my girl since day one. I love Paige. So that would be awesome for me. Um other than that, Ross sucked. Really, like it honestly was terrible. We were in Cricketsville, Louisiana, and the show did nothing for me. It was horrible for like the third week in a row. I, I might boycott it. If you think Raw was good, you don't know what the hell professional. I question your judgment and your anything you say about professional wrestling. You're a goon if you think that show was good. Seriously. Ah, anyways, I'm not giving it a rating. Doesn't even deserve a rating. SmackDown this week was uh, live in the Smoothie King Center in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, home of WrestleMania 34, which myself and Corporate Cappy are planning on going to next year. So this is, I guess, what the one arena for the Roth WrestleMania will be going to, or maybe SmackDown. We'll see what happens. But uh, regardless, sadly enough, uh, New Orleans on SmackDown this week. Yes, crickets. Once again, it's oh man, this is getting bad. <laughs> These crowd reactions need to get better. I'm gonna start losing it on cities. I'm gonna tell him corporate cafe to add Lafayette and uh, New Orleans sadly to the list because uh, this was terrible this week, man. I don't, I, I don't know about you guys. There's a lot of people that are probably gonna question my uh, judgment in that, but the crowds were terrible. Both shows, the crowds were god awful. I, I, I didn't think they. They showed enough hype for certain superstars. Nakamura's entrance, you can barely hear anyone singing. That should be loud as shit. That should be deafening when Nakamura comes out. And I know Darby is ruining it by having him come out every goddamn week now. And sometimes showing up and having an entrance twice in one show. Which is the worst idea possible. They should be keeping this guy in the locker room. And should making him show up twice a month. To keep that aura of Nakamura. But no, they're going to ruin him. It's Vince. He's ruining everybody. It's true what Triple H said. I don't blame him for being mad. Uh, so yeah, Smoothie King Center. I had to get a drink there. Uh, <laughs> all right, so SmackDown this week, again, it's slightly better than Raw, but not good enough. Didn't crack the meh rating, I guess, in my opinion. It was, it was, <laughs> I don't know if that's even a rating. SmackDown was slightly better than Raw, not by much. It was really sad. I mean, they, again, no Ty Dillinger for like the, what are we at now? The, the, what's the count? Six or seven? Are we going to have to wait till we get the 10 to finally get him on fucking TV on SmackDown? Huh? Are we waiting till 10? Huh? SmackDown? Whoever's in charge of creative on SmackDown? Come on. This is sad, man. Ty Dillinger is money. How they don't see it is beyond me. It's crazy. Anyways, uh, SmackDown was all okay. If I would, I'm gonna bump it up to all right. They're building. It's the go home show for Money in the Bank. Uh, I'm stoked for Money in the Bank. Uh, I'm I'm still going with my boy Baron Corbin to win it. And as for the woman, I'm still undecided. It could be anyone, literally, except for uh, the only one I don't see winning is Tamina. Um, but I'm still sticking with my prediction. I think that Lana is gonna win the woman's title. But Naomi's going to be so pissed about it. Like, she's still going to be up or something. And she's going to knock out Lana after the match. The winner of the money, the Women's Money in the Bank is going to come out and cash it in. And that's who's going to be the Women's Champion. Uh, I'm sticking with that prediction. I'm not changing it. That's, I think, what's going to happen. Um, but anyways, as for SmackDown with the women this week, uh, we had uh, two, or I guess four of the competitors have singles matches against each other. We had Naomi and Tamina uh, face off against each other. And Charlotte and Natalya. Uh... Tamina and Naomi facing each other, uh, two former members of uh, Team Bad. So I guess there's some history between them. It was a stiff match, man. Like Tamina and Naomi is just not a good mix. But their, their styles just clash. And uh, I don't know. 
The only sick part was Lana attacking Naomi after and uh, holding up the title up. And she's Lana's getting a good reaction. That's two weeks in a row. It looks like she might even be a baby face. Who knows? Um, we'll have to see. But uh, I have to see. We'll have to see what her skills are on Sunday for her full match because we got uh, uh, we had her finishing move debut this week on Naomi, which is pretty sick. I actually like that finishing move by Lana. And I just want to see what the hell, what her, what her other uh, in-ring skills are. I, I want to see what the rest of her moveset is. So we're going to have to wait till Sunday, I guess. I thought at least she would have a match this week, but I guess not. Um, I still kind of like what they did with her. Attacking the champion and adding to their feud, I guess. There's a short, built feud for the women's title. Um, as for the other women's match, Charlotte and Natalia, it was okay. Uh... The natural selection that Charlotte did this week didn't really look that impactful, but it, it did it. It got the job done. It was strange. Um, I don't know. I just, it, it's tough to pick a winner to see who's going to win Money in the Bank this week. I, I actually can't sit here and tell you a clear-cut person who I'm going to go with. I mean, I'm going to go with my girl Carmella. to be. Uh, if I have to choose, I'm going to go biased and pick Carmella, but I don't know. It's going to be tough to tell. Uh, I've seen a lot of people picking Becky Lynch. I've seen a lot of people picking the Dark Horse Natalia. Um, it's going to be interesting to see who wins that. That's actually going to be a really good match, in my opinion. I think they're uh, planning some good spots, too, with the women. Safe, but uh, some good spots. Uh, we had another Fashion Files this week, which was uh, it was shorter than most, but it was funny. Uh, Breeze gets attacked in his office, and it's trash. A lot of people pointing out the uh, Sami Zayn uh, generic picture, which was hilarious. Um Van Ango is sitting there with this piece of paper and uh, writing and drawing the culprits out as uh, <laughs> Tyler Breeze describes them. And it's just two stick figures and they zoom in on it after it's done. Uh, it's just a comic relief. I'm enjoying it. A lot of people are enjoying the fashion files. I just like that Brazongo and, uh, and uh, <coughs> sorry, Van Dango and uh, Tyler Breeze. Oh, so, yeah, Brazongo getting time on TV. Uh, we've said it. We've seen in the past that they didn't get a lot of TV time when they first got drafted over to SmackDown. I'm glad they're getting more TV time. And we oh, we actually opened the show with all the tag teams, uh, mostly the New Day, and it had some kind of uh, New Orleans kind of band opened them up, which is pretty cool. I liked the New Day's entrance in the beginning. That was pretty uh, well done. Um, I think they're getting more... Uh, I think there's more direction in the tag team division on SmackDown than Raw, in my opinion. I think they know what they're doing with the SmackDowns on tag team more than Raw. Raw, they, just, they, they have they have two things going on at the same time, and they got a, another feud happening at the, off to the side. I don't know, it's just weird. It, there should Raw, there should be teams going for the tag title belts that aren't. They're they're continuing the same. I mean, as much as I love them, continuing Sheamus and Cesaro and the Hardys. I honestly think the club should be added in there somewhat or somehow. Um, as for SmackDown, they're at, I just like the direction the teams are going on SmackDown. They're not using everybody. Uh, the Ascension, I don't know what the hell is going on with them. American Alpha still disappeared. Both these guys are, are still on the milk carton. American Alpha's not injured. I don't know what the hell is going on there. Um, but we had New Day and Brazongo team up facing the Colognes and the Usos. Um, it was a decent match. Uh, it was actually like a good way to get the crowd into it because... Lo and behold, there was more crickets in New Orleans this week. My lord, or Louisiana, sorry. Um, I don't know. Uh, New Day's facing the Usos, I think, yeah, for the titles on Sunday. Oh, or, man, that'd be tough. I think I could see the New Day's coming out with the tag title belts. I honestly could see them coming out. But uh, I think the Usos are going to win dirty. Uh, I think they're going to keep the titles, and they're going to hold on for a little bit, maybe up until uh, SummerSlam. I can see the Usos winning dirty. Uh, so I don't think New Day are going to win the titles just yet, but uh, I'm liking what they're doing with uh, New Day, Brazongo, the Colognes, and the Usos. I just wish they would add more tag teams into it, like the Ascension and American Alpha, who actually deserve to be in there. Um, the WWE title on SmackDown, uh, I honestly just don't, I don't care. It does, it, it's, it's losing its prestige time and time again. Uh, why does Jinder Mahal talk like he's at like volume five on your volume rocker? This guy has like no amplify or ampl I can't think of the word. It's like they can't even amplify his voice backstage enough to hear this guy. And this guy talks. It's just so boring. Like you got two boring guys in the same feud with each other. I, just, I can't get behind Jinder Mahal when he talks like that. Yeah, I like that, that he's getting his chance at the WWE title and they're trying to promote in India. But the guy talks just monotone and just volume five on your volume rock. I can't, I was like, can't hear him half the time. Yeah. He generates heat. He generates good heel heat. That's it. He's got no charisma. He's got nothing. 
That's why I can't get behind Mahal, man. I think it's just, it's lost its initial touch. It was like a one-week thing where everyone's like, oh my god, Jinder's champion. He deserves it, blah, 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 blah. But now it's just, it's run its course. It's done. Um, Randy Orton gives him an RKO out of nowhere, which was hilarious, but that was it. It was funny. Um, I kind of wish Randy Orton wins it from him on Sunday, to be honest. Uh, unless they're still going to go with John Cena and Jinder Mahal leading into SummerSlam for their WWE title. So we'll have to see what happens with that. Um... We had the announced main event of a six-man tag. Gee, fucking tag team on SmackDown. What else is new? Uh, Kevin Owens, Corbin, and Ziggler to face Styles, Nakamura, and Zayn. These guys had, like, pre-match cringe meetings throughout the show, which did nothing for me. I hate when they do that. For some, for, I don't know if it's just me, but I hate when they do that. Especially when it just seems too, like, scripted. and ugh, It just does nothing for me. Just have the match. Have the match. Um, it was a good match, though. I actually enjoyed this match this week. Um, a lot of... Let me look at the talent in the ring. They should be having a good match. Uh, I loved after the match where everyone started attacking each other and Owens brought in the ladder and there's a bunch of ladder spots. Um, I, I actually love that too because they're hyping for their Money in the Bank ladder match on Sunday. So they're using the ladder and, you know, basically getting you hyped for Money in the Bank. And a good way they did that is when they had Nakamura uh, uh, give uh, Baron Corbin the Kinshasa. He climbed the ladder and then grabbed the briefcase actually off the hook. That's the first time I've ever seen that someone do that. That's not at my, like that's not actually at the money to make pay per view. Is take the briefcase off the hook uh, beforehand. I don't know if that's ever happened before, but I actually enjoyed uh, Nakamura doing that. I don't think he's gonna win. Nakamura would be a good, I guess. Uh, I guess he'd be a good candidate for someone to win the money in the bank briefcase this Sunday, but I'm still going to go with Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin's that dark horse. I think uh, I know Ziggler. A lot of people are saying Ziggler is a dark horse, but I, I think Corbin's more the dark horse. I think Ziggler or Corbin's actually going to win it. I think it suits for Corbin to win the money in the bank briefcase. And then uh, later on down the year, later on the year, uh, cash it in. And then I think Bear Corbin eventually becomes the WWE champion, man. I can honestly see it happen. He'd be a sick heel champion. So, I'm all for Corbin winning it. Uh, I, yeah, Mason in the chat saying he thinks Zayn will win. I see a lot of people on Twitter saying Zayn will win. I'd love for Zayn to win, to be honest, Mason. Um, I would honestly love it because this guy is due for a big win like that. And I wouldn't doubt if Sami Zayn won, man. He had a good showing this week. He he, he got the pin for the win for his team. So him winning, I, I love it. But uh, I'm still going with Baron Corbin. For some reason, I'm going to go with my gut. I'll go with Baron Corbin. Um. We had a Hype Bros reunion backstage this week, too. It looks like they're going to reunite the Hype Bros. I just hope they get used and are not uh, put in the, the milk carton section of SmackDown and then sitting on the milk carton missing for weeks. You know, they, they have their reunion, and then they're just missing. It's terrible. But uh, we'll see what happens with the Hype Bros, man. I don't know what's going on. I think uh, I honestly think Mojo Raleigh is going to turn on uh, Zack Ryder. As much as I don't want it to happen, I love the Hype Bros tag team. I think uh, they're going to reunite, but then Mojo's going to turn at some point in a match or something and turn on Zack Ryder. I think that's going to happen. Or vice versa. I can see it happening both ways. But uh, I think that's going to happen with the, the Hype Bros. Um, <clears throat> and Mason's saying Ryder is going to turn heel on Mojo. Yeah, I can see I, I can see both ways there, uh, Mason. I, don't, I wouldn't doubt both ways. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, but as for SmackDown, it was okay. It was slightly better than Raw, not by much. I mean, again, no Dillinger for some reason, as much as it's a biased thing to say, and he's from our hometown, Niagara Falls. I think you need to use him. He's money. He's got the look. He's got the gimmick. He's got the crowd with the 10 chance. I don't know why they just put him in the dark match every goddamn week. I don't understand. Um, hopefully after Money in the Bank, we can actually get him on TV. Let's hope so. I thought he was going to be adding the Money in the Bank uh, ladder match, but uh, I guess not. Um... So obviously SmackDown won it this week for for us. I guess I you know I talked to Corporate Cappy and Cappy hated Raw this week, man. He he's actually more boy more up for boycotting Raw than I am right now because it, it's terrible. We're getting three. Why why should we keep watching and waste three hours of our life on a show that doesn't look like it's ever gonna get better, right? So why blame us? Anyways, uh, that's gonna do it for the discussion of uh, Raw in SmackDown. And let's get into it, though. The other part of the show, our segment called The List of Ten. Ten. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's going to happen? You just made the list. That's right. Welcome to The List of Ten, the part of the show where we have a superstar 
that is the makes the list this week and a perfect 10 superstar of the week. And I do not have corporate cappies. I should have asked for his. I think that's, oh, that's the one thing I wanted to do was to ask for his list of 10 uh, superstars. But we'll get into mine. And my superstar this week that makes the list is none other than Alicia Fox. It's a double one. Alicia Fox and Noam Dar make the list this week. And I, I shouldn't have to th- explain why. We just saw the most cringiest thing, I think, on television. Uh, it, it goes up there with the Bailey, this is your life bullshit. And oh my God, man, what the hell was that? The whole entrance with Noam Dar and Alicia Fox talking on FaceTime, it was just so bad. I saw people in the crowd shaking their heads going, I really paid good money to say this crap at an arena. Terrible. And for that, Alicia Fox and Noam Dar. You know what? You just made the list. That's right. They both make the list. So, my perfect 10 superstar of the week, Mason, you're going to love this in the chat, goes to Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn is my perfect 10 superstar of the week, and he gets it because he has he has a huge win this week, man. A massive win going into Money in the Bank this week. He had a... Um, He had had help from AJ Styles, but he got the win in that huge six-man tag on SmackDown this week. And a lot of momentum going into the Money in the Bank uh, this week. And again, I would love for Sami Zayn to win Money in the Bank. That'd be pretty cool, but I'm still going to go with Corbin. But Sami Zayn with a good week, and that's why he gets the perfect superstar of the week. So... Sami Zayn, Perfect 10 Superstar of the Week. Alicia Fox, Noem Dar, share the list Superstar of the Week for me. Oh, man, that was so bad this week. That was garbage. It was pure, pure, absolute garbage. It goes up there what we got with the bear this week. Oh, man, Raw is getting on the boycott level. And if it's, you know what, I'm probably going to give it to next week. If next week's bad... I'm gonna boycott it for the go home show for Great Balls of Fire, and that's that's <laughs> that's pretty sad, man. I don't know, it's 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 pretty sad. Um, so that's gonna do it for that. Let's get into your questions out there. I asked you guys on uh, Twitter to send us questions for the show, and I'm gonna answer them the best of my ability. So we will start off with uh, I'll start off at the bottom here. Uh, Mason Dunbar. So he got his uh, questions in late here. Thank you, Mason. He says, "What do you think?" They will have, or what do you think they will have AJ Styles do after Money in the Bank? Really good question. I was thinking that too. Um, I honestly can see them uh, continuing Kevin Owens and AJ Styles because uh, honestly, if I was a creative right now for SmackDown, I wouldn't know what to do with Styles at this point. Um, they're not going to feed him with Cena coming back. Uh, and maybe he goes for the WWE title against Jinder Mahal or Randy Orton, whoever wins it. I don't know. I don't see him going right there yet. I think they're going to continue Kevin Owens and AJ Styles after Money in the Bank. And they're going to continue with the U.S. title. And that's going to lead into Battleground and for a U.S. title match against Kevin Owens again um, at Battleground. So I think that's what's going to happen with AJ Styles. It's tough. It's tough. really tough to see what, to, what they're going to do with Styles uh, after Money in the Bank. Um, imagine he wins a briefcase. Who knows? Um, we'll have to see. Uh, anyways, moving on. Glorious Greg at xgilly929 on Twitter. He puts, who are your favorites to win the men's and women's money in the bank ladder match this Sunday? So as I said before in the show, my favorites, uh, boy, Baron Corbin. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if Zayn win it though. Zayn looks like a good candidate or Nakamura. I think there's a lot more, a uh, lot more potential winners this year than there's ever been in the Money in the Bank. Um, I really like the way they did it this year. Um, as for the women, if I'm gonna pick one, Greg, I'm gonna go with Carmella. I'm gonna pick the bias pick out here, and I'm gonna go with Carmella. I think that Lana beats Naomi. I'm gonna go with my prediction. Lana beats Naomi, and she's not knocked out completely. She wins dirty or some shit like that. Naomi's gonna attack Lana, basically knock her out. And as Naomi leaves, Carmella's going to come out with the Money in the Bank briefcase with Ellsworth and then cash it in and become women's champion. I, I know it's the, like the most biased pick in the world because I'm a Carmella, gir- a Carmella guy, but I think that's what's going to happen. I'm going to stick with that prediction, and we'll have to see what happens on Sunday. But those are my two picks. As for Cappy, I, I don't know his picks. I'm going to guess for the men's. Actually, for the men's, he, I think he told us. I think he said he was sticking with... Uh, 
I think he said, uh, what did he say, Sami Zayn? I think he said Sami Zayn to, to win Money in the Bank. Uh, I'll have to go back and see. Uh, as for the woman, I, I think he's going with, he said the Dark Horse. I think he's going with Natty for the win with that. Or no, Charlotte. I think he's picking Charlotte, yeah. He's going to pick, he picked Charlotte for Money in the Bank. So those are his picks. Uh, second question by Glorious Greg. What can Raw do at this point to be a better show after this week's horrid show? Man, they can do so much better than what they're, they're, they're producing this week. In the last couple of weeks. Um, they can book it better. In my opinion, they, 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 it looks like they just kind of throw it out there. They can e- easily organize the show better, like as if the tag team match should open the show to get the crowd into it. And Lesnar and Joe should have ended the show. Um, they need to stop with the, the goofiness. The, not the goofiness, I guess. They got to stop with the bear thing. They got to stop with uh, Alicia Fox, Noam Dar doing cringe shit every goddamn week. They got to make the cruiserweights look better. Uh, maybe sometime have a 205 Live main event. I think that's a way to good. Uh, that's a good way to promote 205 Live. Is have main event a Raw? Why not? You can have main event one Raw. It is not going to hurt them. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's really tough, man. They have the roster to do it. They just need to book it properly. They got to start looking at it from afar, man. Like, what's the best case for Bray Wyatt? Do we put him in a feud with Seth Rollins? No. You put him in a feud with Finn Balor. That makes more sense because you're not even including Finn Balor on TV. You don't even have Roman Reigns on TV this week. I didn't even notice that. Uh, anyways, uh, next question by Glorious Greg. With Zack Ryder back in a possible reunion for the Hype Bros in the tag team title match, does SmackDown have the better division now? I think SmackDown has a way better division. Or... Actually, that's tough. Good question, Glorious Greg. I think Raw has the talent. It's just SmackDown uses their talent better. Um, you got it from afar. Uh, Raw has better talent than SmackDown. But when you go in close, they don't use it properly. Yet they misuse the club. The, the Enzo and Cass thing is dragging out way too long. The Revival's there, but they're almost coming back. When they come back, I think they'll be a little bit better. Um, Cesaro and Sheamus and the Hardys might get stale if they continue it after Great Balls of Fire. And they broke up Golden Truth. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's to me, SmackDown even has the same level of talent. They just know how to use them better. You have the the Colognes actually being pro- more properly used on SmackDown than they ever were with uh, the Shining Stars on Raw. So it, it's just the way that you, you, you book a tag team, the way you use them on a certain show. And it looks like SmackDown does it better. So thank you, Glorious Greg, for your question. I hope I answered them uh, to your to your liking this week. I'm, I'm trying here. I'm literally doing this show on adrenaline right now. Uh, next question comes from a new person, new tweeter. And if I'm saying this right, I I hope I'm saying this right. If I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. Uh, I'm thinking it's saying Ayat, at Persian Ayat on Twitter. He puts, do you think Lana and Natty winning, sun, winning Sunday is the right move? Uh, so that's what I'm guessing he thinks what's going to happen is Lana winning the title and Natty winning winning the bank. I think L- Lana winning the money or the, the, the title makes sense. If only the, the one, the person that wins the briefcase is going to cash in, uh, the same night. If they're not, I don't think it's the right move. I think Naomi should retain and they should go. If Natty wins a briefcase, they should roll with her afterwards. Um, I think Natty is not the type of woman to win the briefcase and cash it in the same night. I think the only person out of that whole match to do so is Carmella, in my opinion. Uh, to me, it is out of the question. She is definitely not going to win anything like that. Um, so, yeah, it, it, I only see Lana winning and it, ma- it making sense if she loses the title the same night by the, from the Money in the Bank winner. So, that's that's how my opinion behind that, I and I hope I answered your questions right there for you. Uh, next question is Casey Selvis at Selvis94 on Twitter. He puts, when will WB... <laughs> oh my god, I, I laughed. I read the question first. Uh, when will WB end the garbage PG era? It's not working. And when will Roman Reigns turn heel? Hmm. Well, I don't know when they would end the PG era crap, <laughs> uh, Casey. A public traded company. I think we're always going to get this uh, for a while. I think it's just the way that Vince books it and Kevin Dunn produces it that it makes it look that way. Uh, and you even clearly see Triple H being mad at, at Vince for use of their product or use of their superstars. It's crazy, man. I, I really hope it would be better at times, man. It's, they need to. He needs to sit back and think, like, am I doing a good job here? 
am I actually producing what's... I mean, you're getting the lowest ratings for Raw in a long time lately, so I don't know what's going on. And if The lower they dip, man... It, it, I think the more he's going to rethink everything. So it's almost like we have to get, we have to stop watching raw in order for Vince to get a clue. Um, and when will Reigns turn heel? I don't think Reigns is going to turn heel, Casey. I think he's, he's kind of like in between right now. He's not really completely baby face. He's not completely heel. Um, I think they're going to stick with him in the middle. He gets the reaction and that's what Darby is looking for with Roman Reigns. He gets a reaction. As long as he gets the reaction, they don't care what he is. I honestly think if Roman Reigns came out, and it's really hard to do because you have the fangirl screaming, the kids screaming. If Roman Reigns came out and he got no reaction, Vince would be like, oh, shit. Okay, we got to do something now. Uh, this is definitely not working. But because we give him the reaction we give him with the thunderous boos and the mixing with the fangirls and the kids cheering, Vince is just going to keep pushing him down our throats no matter what. It doesn't matter. As long as he gets a reaction, that's what all WWE looks for. As long as he gets a reaction, that's what's going to happen with Roman Reigns. Um, his next question, uh, it's actually advice from Casey advice to you, for you guys. It would not go to WrestleMania next year. Do you really want to see reigns win the title again? And think about it guys. I, I mostly go in the WrestleMania next year, Casey, cause I, I want to just do it, man. I don't want to go to WrestleMania that's nearby. Cause that just ruins it for me. I want to go away for WrestleMania. I want to experience everything. I want to do access. I want to do, uh, WrestleCon. I want to go to the Hall of Fame. I want to do NXT TakeOver. I think now would be a good time, man, with the rosters that are it's at now and the potentials with uh, we could get Styles and Nakamura at next year's WrestleMania. Why would I want to miss that? I know we're going to get the most likely main event of Reigns and Lesnar for the title, but you just you have to think of the rest of the card, man. You got to think of what else might happen. So I think I'm still we're still gonna go. We don't care. We're 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 putting our minds to it. We're actually setting in stone. We're actually gonna be booking the Airbnb we're going to uh, next week, or sorry, next month. So the Airbnb we're staying at, we're gonna be booking it next month. So we're we're going there next year, no matter what. And we got a lot of plans for the podcast for that. So. Yeah, we're still going to go, Casey, no matter what it is. If it's Reigns and Lesnar, it's Reigns and Lesnar. As much as I don't want to see it, it's going to happen. Um, what do you guys, his next question, or his last question, what do you guys think about the ruined matches at SummerSlam? Kurt Angle versus Triple H and Goldberg versus Reigns. This is the first time hearing about these rumors. I didn't really, wasn't on the computer a lot today. Kurt Angle versus Triple H is interesting. Uh, that might have to do with the tweets he's been getting. Uh, maybe Stephanie comes back and maybe they start a whole uh, campaign with... Uh, uh triple h and kurt angle i don't know that'd be kind of cool uh i love to see kurt angle samoa joe more than triple h maybe it, it, i could see it doing samoa joe maybe samoa joe kind of gets screwed out of his great balls of fire match and he kind of p- loses it on kurt angle and that leads them to having a match at SummerSlam. but if it's kurt angle and triple h i don't know i heard that's probably for uh i heard that's uh sorry kurt angle triple h is uh more towards what's it called wrestlemania sorry wrestlemania next year i heard that's where they're actually going to have their match um if they're forwarding it to SummerSlam, then i don't know i'm not really sure how i feel about uh these guys uh having a match with each other so early i think that's more of like a wrestlemania type of match especially with triple h um i don't know if it happens then you know what it happens i i kind of see i kind of like it we'll see uh, Goldberg versus Reigns, though, uh, I think everyone thinks next week when Reigns is coming out to announce his SummerSlam plan, uh, John Cena, the free agent, is going to come out and confront them. But I honestly, I read that too, Casey. I think it's probably the article you read that uh, Goldberg is teasing a WWE return soon. So maybe it is Goldberg and Reigns. I, oh, man. The Spear versus the Spear. I wouldn't doubt if they're doing that for SummerSlam. <laughs> it's going to be uh, an interesting uh, build-up, that's for sure. <laughs> it's one of those things with me, Casey, that it's a we'll-see thing. So we'll see what happens. We'll have to wait for Roman Reigns' uh, announcement next week. Uh, next set of questions. Juggy Badass, out of Zazel YT on Twitter. So he got some questions this week. Thank you, Juggy. He was, do you think they will give Joe and Lesnar more than 12 minutes at Great Balls of Fire? <laughs> I mean, he laughs every time he's the pay-per-view name. Yeah, terrible pay-per-view name. I, I bet you laugh when you see that uh, that logo they use. I guess they're changing it too now already, going back to the third logo. Um, Lesnar and Joe. Oh, man, I could see them going, yeah, between 12 and 15. Maybe not less, but uh, definitely more than 12 for sure, Juggy. I think it's going to be between 12, 12 and 15 minutes. I think we're going to get an interesting match. There's going to be a lot of sweat in the match. Both guys like sweat like mad crazy in uh, like two minutes into a match. So 
It's going to be a very drippy match in a way. Um, but I see them going between 12 and 15 minutes. So that's just uh, what I think. Uh, next question by Juggy. Do you think we will see Orton get buried on Sunday or we get another cringe Orton title run? Uh, see, I'm on the fence with that, man. I think either superstar could come out with the title on Sunday. Um, I can see them carrying going forward with Jinder Mahal leading into SummerSlam. I think, you know what, I'm going to go with that. I think Mahal's holding the title till SummerSlam, in my opinion. And they're going to start a Cena and Reigns camp, or sorry, Cena and Mahal campaign after uh, Money in the Money in the Bank. So I don't think Orton's winning. I don't think he gets buried, but I think he loses this Sunday at, uh, at Great at Money in the Bank, and they actually have put off a decent match. Um, his last question by Juggy: Do you think Money in the Bank will pass or fail? I believe it will barely pass. Uh, I think it's gonna pass, my, uh, Juggy. I, think, I don't think we'll be disappointed. I it only passes in my opinion if they do it the right way. If they're going to do some out of the blue weird picks for both Money in the Bank uh, title matches, uh, I don't know, man. Derby always comes out with some crazy booking sometimes. I think they're going to do the smart way. SmackDown does a lot of things smart in our, as we've seen the last couple of weeks. So I think it's going to get a pass, Juggy. I think it honestly will get a pass, and I really hope I get to see it. If not, I'm going to have to be watching it all the way at 12 o'clock if I can't get that day off on Sunday. Um, we got some late questions here by Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV. He puts, who is your favorite Money in the Bank winner, and who do you think is the worst? My fave, CM Punk, and the worst, Golden Boy Cena. My favorite uh, Money in the Bank winner, hmm. I think it was Edge. I think I'm still going to go with Edge as my favorite Money in the Bank winner, Michael Chow, just because uh, the way he cashed in the Money in the Bank uh, briefcase on the Golden Boy John Cena at New Year's Revolution, the first ever cash in, the way he did it right after the Elimination Chamber, and it just sparked a great Cena and Edge feud from there. So I'm gonna stick with uh, Edge as my favorite Money to Bank winner, and the worst, oh, mm, worst Money to Bank winner, probably Jack Swagger. <laughs> I don't think he deserved it. That was probably one of the worst Money in the Bank ladder matches I watched too. And Swagger winning the World Heavyweight title. It wasn't right for him at the time. It was terrible. It was during the whole PG era crap. I honestly think it <laughs> Jack Swagger winning is the worst in my opinion. Uh, another favorite of mine was always Daniel Bryan too. I always liked him winning the Money in the Bank, especially because he did it twice. So, uh, But I'm going to stick with Edge as my favorite. And the worst, uh, Jack Swagger. Um, Next question by Michael Chow. Where do you think this Cena free agent storyline will go? Honestly, I don't even know, man. I honestly was so confused when I saw people posting pictures of uh, John Cena as a free agent. I thought it was Photoshop. I thought it was a joke, but it was real. I, when I saw it on WWE television, I'm like, seriously, what does this mean, free agent John Cena? A lot of people think it has something to do with Roman Reigns. It could. Roman Reigns has a, a SummerSlam announcement next week. Cena could appear for that. I know WWE loves and wants to see John Cena and Roman Reigns in a match together. Um, they could go that direction. In my honest opinion, I honestly <laughs> don't know, Michael Chow. I, I can't I can't tell what they're going to do. Um, ah, God, it's hard. And a fan, I don't know what the hell this I hope we get clarification with the, the free agent John Cena and what it means uh, next week. If not, then I don't know what the hell is going on. Maybe we get clarification on Sunday at Money in the Bank too. So I guess it's just one of the things. we we'll have to see what happens. Uh, Michael Chow, his next question. Who, why do you think Balor and Dillinger are left off TV? Is creative just bad or are they saving them for a big match? Um, I said it earlier in the show, Michael Chow, you missed it. Uh, Balor missed TV this week because they had him promoting Dare to be off in, uh, I don't know if he was in Singapore or somewhere. I mean, I, I in my opinion, I think that was the worst idea because they can do that when Derby actually goes to those places for live events. I think they just, they did it too. I don't know why they did it at the same time when Raw was in the States because I, honestly it took a lot away from Raw and Finn Balor not even being on it. And Dillinger being left off TV for like the sixth week in a row. I don't know what the hell they're going on. I hope they have plans for Dillinger going forward after Money in the Bank. Hopefully it's just one of those things they're waiting until after Money in the Bank. Um, I would have loved him to see him in the, the Money in the Bank ladder match. I think that's would have been a better spot for him. But it sucks, man. Again, there's money behind Dillinger. Dirty just doesn't want to do it. Balor not being on TV, you just added to the, the cringe to cringe Raw this week. Um, it creative is just bad, Michael Shaw. I'm just the, the, the it's it's worse for Raw. It's honestly worse for Raw. Um, Michael Shaw was I heard to boost ratings. They will have Cena appear on both Raw and SmackDown as a part of a free agent storyline. Oh, 
<laughs> that is terrible. Uh, it's just garbage. That's not gonna boost ratings. Honestly, it won't. It honestly, I honestly gonna think it's gonna backfire on them. I call it right now. It is going to backfire on WWE. Cena appearing on both shows is the worst idea. What's the point of having a brand split when you have one superstar appearing on both shows? I, 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 Cena's not at that level yet. They should just keep him on SmackDown. They can do a lot with him on SmackDown with superstars that are there and the people that they are there now during a shakeup and the people they've called up there. I think a lot of people want to see Cena and Nakamura. I thought they were going that direction for SummerSlam. I don't know what the hell is going on with this free agent bull crap. I, I think it's going to backfire on them. Um, so we'll see. Uh, yeah, I remember when Heath Slater did it. But uh, that's going to do it for the questions. I honestly thank you guys all for the questions this week. And again, it's just me this week. I, I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and listening with me and bearing with me as I had a long day today. And Corporate Cabby has had a long week with his work schedule. And they just conflicted this week. And it's one of those things that's... I hope we don't have it happen later on in the show. But if it happens, it happens. Um, but yeah, again, next week, the podcast might not happen. Uh, we're really busy next week with uh, Corporate Cab getting ready to go on his vacation to Michigan. And myself with a really busy work week next week. So if it doesn't happen, there's still going to be lots of content. I'm still going to get a Sunday night heat out to you guys this Sunday. I got it all prepped up for YouTube Live. So it's going to be a YouTube Live exclusive this Sunday. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to have the Blast from the Past series up and booming. And I'm also getting a 2K17 series back in the works, which is going to be directly geared to you fans out there and what fantasy matches you want to see me commentate. And I'll put those up on YouTube for all of you. So that is going to wrap it up, guys. I think that's going to do it. Uh, I think I went through everything in the show. Yep. That is going to wrap it up for week number 11 of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian WWE podcast that reviews, or sorry, discusses and reacts to, to Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWR, or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR, and on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram by searching up No Holds Barred WP, and you can join the conversation on Twitter by sending us your questions to be read and answered right here on The Lowdown Show. All links will be in the video podcast description below on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and I hope to get Corporate Cappy back on the show sometime soon. So we'll see about that. But we, again, we are always reminding you to keep it on the lowdown.